Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to look at the best rookies from 2023 Top Series 1. Every time we have a flagship release, I like to look at the checklist and find who the best rookies to target are. And in this video, I'm going to do that exact same thing. There's about 16 rookies, I think, that are worth buying. I'm not going to do all 16 in this video. I'm going to show you numbers 11 through 16 so you know who they are and what their ranking is and what my thoughts are. But I want to describe how this ranking works prior to showing you the rankings themselves so you know what we're working off of. So there's four things I think that are valuable when looking at these rookies. Granted, we don't have a ton of major league stats to really compare to so it's not always the best factor so what we have is prospect rankings prospect rankings are basically people who do the top 100 lists from major league baseball baseball prospectus and other sites all these people what they do is they list these players so if a player is a top 10 prospect they get 10 points if a player is a top 40 prospect they get six points if they're a top 50 prospect they get five points and so forth if they're not in a top 100 prospect list they do not get any points for that then there's the age factor for players 20 years old they get 10 points if a player is 22 they get eight points all the way until if a player's 29, they get one point. Then there's minor league stats and major league stats. These four things combined give us an idea if a player's going to have a good career. It's not perfect. It does show the prospect ranking status where these professionals are looking at these players in minor leagues. It shows the age because it's important for a player to have enough time to actually accumulate all the stats needed to make the Hall of Fame. Minor league stats, which shows their body of work so far, and then the major league stats at this point. Here are the numbers 11 through 16. All their great players. A lot of them are really good, like Vinny Pascantino you've probably never even heard of him. He's had great minor league career and a good big league career so far. We have Oscar Gonzalez. He walks out to the SpongeBob SquarePants theme song, which I love. Shay Langoliers is a former Braves top prospect who was traded to the Athletics. He had a great year this last year at AAA. Before that, never really had a big year in the minor leagues, and he didn't have a great debut with the Braves themselves. Yover Peguero is another top prospect. You probably heard his name from Bowman Chrome checklists. And he, just like Shay Langoliers, did not have a big 2022. But overall, he's only 20 one years old and he is a top 70th prospect which is why he's this high then we have von grissom and miguel vargas von grissom he should be higher in a lot of people's eyes but because he does not have a prospect ranking he is this low on the list i think he's really the only one that's not in the right spot besides maybe one other player we'll discuss due to prospect rankings and the way that they work so let's start at number 10 number 10 is oswald peraza he's a great player here are the rankings that i gave him only 22 years old which i love top 50 prospect good minor league stats and a really good year this last Last year here he is here here was the year he had at the yankees 139 ops plus is fantastic small sample size only 49 at bats 0.6 war but he's a good ball player here is the top 50 prospect rankings and on top of that his minor league stats are pretty good he doesn't have the highest slugging percentage but he can get that up as he ages and gets bigger in the big leagues it makes sense he did have 19 home runs this year which is his best slugging season in the minor leagues only 99 games and one home run in the big leagues that's number 10 with oswald peraza after that we have hunter brown of the houston astros i was surprised that have him on here but i was doing the research he's really good he's a top prospect top 40 overall prospect and he had great stats in the minor leagues and great stats in the big leagues this could even be a lot higher for his minor league total we can look at his numbers real fast with the astros this year he went 2-0 only started twice he i think it came out of the bullpen a few different times i think seven other times he had a sub 1.1 whip and on top of that a 0.89 era that's a really good year on top of that we can look at his triple a stats he had a 2.97 era primarily as a starter which is really impressive for some reason the Astros just keep producing pitching talent and it's pretty impressive. At number eight, we have Brett Beatty, a really important prospect for the New York Mets. Now as a Mets fan, I imagine they're going to be chasing this guy throughout the entire year and all the releases we're going to have in 2023. But Brett Beatty, he is great. He's young, only 22 years old, heading into his age 23 season. He's a top 20 prospect, good minor league stats, but did not have a great big league season this year. If we look at his number, 67 OPS plus is not great. Negative 0.3 war is not great, but only 38 at bats, probably 10 games or so, 11 games. So that makes sense. But in AAA and AA this year, he had a great year, 315 batting average, 943 OPS with 19 home runs and less than 100 games. That's really solid. And his overall body of work in the minor leagues is really good as well. At number seven, we have Tristan Casas for the Boston Red Sox, their top prospect. He is a top 20 prospect, only 22 years old, just like Brett Beatty here. Not as good in minor league stats, but he did have a little bit better major league debut. We can see Tristan Casas, he had a 113 OPS plus 766 OPS. He did have five home runs, only 76 at bats for a 
0.1 war. And granted, he's a really big power hitter. Here he is, top 20 all these different prospect lists. And here is the year he had in AAA between rookie ball and AAA, 889 OPS, 281 batting average, and 12 home runs in only 76 games. But overall, really solid player. Tristan Casas is one people are going to be chasing. I kind of like Brett Beatty more, but Tristan Casas is a really good option. And then we have Nolan Gorman. I watched a lot of Nolan Gorman this year because I watched a lot of Arenado and a lot of Paul Goldschmidt, but he's going to be 22 years old. He's a top 30 prospect. He has okay minor league stats, just like Tristan Casas. They're above average for sure. Not a superstar level, but they're above average. And his big league stats were pretty decent this year as well. He only had a 226 batting average. Didn't really have a ton of success putting the ball in play and having success with that. He did have 14 home runs, only 283 at bats. Over the course of a full season, it's about 25 to 30 home run potential. 106 OP plus above league average and overall he is a top prospect and his minor league stats are pretty dang good for his career it's just i'd love to see him get his batting average up and maybe banning the shift will help him with that at number five we have gabriel moreno who was just traded from the blue jays over to the diamondbacks for dalton varsho dalton varsho great defender by the way one of the best in baseball but let's talk about gabriel moreno not dalton varsho he is only 22 years old he is a top teen prospect i think he's like number 12 or something his minor league stats are really good and his major league stats are really good he's kind of a blast of the past he doesn't have a high OPS, but he always has a high batting average, meaning he doesn't have a high slugging percentage. He hasn't really hit for a ton of power. You can see that here, 733 OPS in the big leagues with the 319 batting average over 69 games, 0.7 war, and an OPS plus of 111. If we scroll down, we will see his minor league stats show that same thing, a 310 batting average with an 844 OPS. A 365 on base percentage is great, but a 479 selection percentage is a little low. I would love to see some more power from him, but as a catcher hits over 300 with a high OPS plus above 110, that's a really good ball player. And he's super young and can develop that power in the big leagues. Then at number four, we have Riley Green. Riley Green is probably the best prospect the Tigers have. And no offense to Spencer Torkelson, but I'd buy Riley Green any day. Top 10 prospect, he's 21 years old. Minor league stats are good and his major league stats are great. We'll go fast over Riley green but we can see right here 1.4 war ops plus around 100 which is league average and even though his ops wasn't that high in the big leagues at 682 he has all the potential and showed a lot of really great signs of improvement over the course of the year and i think he could be a really great talent for the tigers at number three of adley rutschman of the baltimore orioles not the last oriole we'll see just a hint about who's coming up next but he is a top 10 prospect he's 24 years old which is why he's this low on the list if he was any younger he'd be higher he has a very good minor league track record and this last year, he was second rookie of the year runner-up to Julio Rodriguez. He was really, really good. So let's look at his stats real quick. Here he is. Here is the year he had as a catcher, which is a wild 5.2 war, 13 home runs, OPS plus of 128 and OPS over 806. The best catching prospect, I'd say, probably since Buster Posey. Kind of looks like Buster Posey in a way. You know, looks really nice. Number one or number two prospect, according to all publications. And his minor league stats are just great. So that's Adley Rutschman at number three. And I don't think Baltimore Orioles are going to be very cheap in any breaks. At number two, we have Michael Harris. This might surprise you. Michael Harris would have been number one, but his prospect rankings weren't super high heading into the season. He was around a 40th overall prospect, even though he's only 21 years old. His minor league stats are, they're not amazing, but they're above average. But the year he had this last year in the big leagues was just awesome. So let's look at Michael Harris. 5.3 war, 135 OPS plus, 19 home runs, which I believe is the most he's had at any level. And he had it at the big leagues, which is kind of crazy to think about. I hope that's sustainable, but he shows all the potential of a gold glove defender in center field while having the potential of being a 130 OPS plus type of guy. That's a future Hall of Famer type player if he can stay healthy and maintain those paces. But if you look at Michael Harris down here, you're going to see again, his career OPS in the minors is only 801 with a 292 batting average, only 14 home runs in 197 minor league games, came to the big leagues, had 19 home runs in 114 games. Who knows what it is? Maybe better umpires. Who knows? Maybe the ball's different in the big leagues. Either way, he was really, really good for the Braves. And I hope there's no regression from him. If I had to pick regression between Harris and Julio Rodriguez, Rodriguez, probably pick Harris just because of his minor league stats compared to Julio Rodriguez minor league stats, but I think he could have a really great year. And at number one, we have Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar Henderson is the number one prospect in all of baseball, according to every publication. He's only 21 years old. Minor league stats are awesome, and his big league stats this last year were still really dang good. So here's Gunnar Henderson, 0.9 war, 123 OPS plus. His OPS was almost 800, a 259 batting average, and four home runs. He is a shortstop and a third baseman. I think there's concerns about him being a shortstop long term, but even if it's a 
third baseman, he's still a really good ball player. Here he is number one across all publications and his minor league stats, a 866 OPS, a 276 batting average, 37 home runs and 246 games. So that is Gunnar Henderson. It might surprise you he's number one, but he's just good across the board. Michael Harris, if you put him at a top 10 prospect, look how high he would have been above Gunnar Henderson. But at this point, that's where Michael Harris is. But I think overall, some key takeaways. If you're looking to buy breaks, the Orioles are not going to be cheap and the Braves are not going to be cheap. Both teams have two very good rookies that are in this set. And I think this set is really deep. This is a set just like 2022 Tops Update with a lot of rookies in it. A good thing about this set compared to 2022 Tops Update with these rookie cards is these are their true rookies and there's no confusion with short prints in previous sets like we saw with Julio, Torkelson, and Witt in Top Series 2 and an update. So that's really nice. Overall, really great checklist. It's really interesting. There's 330 cards on this checklist and every single card on the checklist will have an image variation. So every card will have a golden mirror image variation short print, which is kind of wild. I think Tops is realizing that people who are player collectors, the base cards don't mean anything. Maybe these short prints will mean more. Really cool imagery leaning into that, which is why we love Stadium Club. If we can get that in Top Series 1 and Top Series 2 and update, I think we'll all be happy. Really solid set. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with these rankings, disagree with these rankings, which rookies you're going to be targeting. And other than that, I will see you in the next video.